they will create a shrine on the internet, on social media. Because they have to get validation from somewhere. So they have to post for all the world to see what a special person you were and how because of you, they are who they are and how much they've learned and how much they've grown because of you, how much you've done for them, how they took you for granted and how they're going to get their life together. It feeds your ego, doesn't it? Psychopath Exposure. How are you? Thanks for tuning in, Warriors. Today I wanted to make a video on borderline personality disordered individuals. Of course, a lot of what I'm going to say also applies to the narcissist personality disordered individuals. But it's interesting how borderlines work because borderlines tend to show a lot of empathy and uh, feelings that you won't see much from a narcissist. The borderline actually feels, uh, the studies have shown, they, they actually can show a lot of empathy and uh, a lot of emotion, so much emotion that they will self-harm and uh, do a lot of atrocious things at the idea that they might lose you forever, even though they're the ones that pushed you away they're the ones that lied, they're the ones that cheated, they're the ones that self-destructed and self-sabotaged. They will feel those emotions. Unfortunately, they also have the ability to tune them all out and get distracted with a shiny new object and completely flip their reticular activation system, their selective focus, and um, pretty much treat you like if you don't exist. If you guys know anything about narcissists and psychopaths, you don't exist in their world. You exist in the world that they're the center of attention of, and you're, you're there in the background, and as they need you, then, okay, there you are. Let me see what I can take, and you'll be here temporary. But after that, once you've been disposed and discarded, you don't really exist. It's different than how uh, a normal person views people and values relationships. Even if you're not currently speaking with that person, you know, people grow, they grow apart, they have families, they have responsibilities. Sometimes people like time for themselves, uh, but they still exist. You still think about them. You know, I just run into an old mentor of mine at the gym. This old man, I've mentioned him before. I um, hadn't seen him in months, and we used to do a lot of work together, and, you know, he saw me, he gave me a big hug, and, uh, and he was like, I think about you every day, I was like, yeah, man, you're always in my thoughts, too, you know, just doing different things, um, but a borderline, a narcissist, they're able to just snap of a finger, you, you, you no longer exist, um, but anyway, I wanted to make the video because despite that, or in spite of that, when the borderline goes into that mode where they realize, oh no, I'm going to lose you forever, and they truly believe they're going to die without you, then they re-idealize you, okay? The borderline re-idealizes their, their victims. And I, yes, I call them victims because once you're entangled with a cluster B personality individual, you will be victim of their predatory behavior. It is predatory when you look at it, when, you, when you've gone through this and you pull back and you realize, wow, I was, I was under a spell. I was under their power. They had their claws on me. They, they had them so deep they were inside of me. Some of those fake nails snapped and they're still inside your skin. Right, gentlemen? Um, anyway, I digress. The re-idealization re of a borderline um, it's, it's very dangerous if you're going through it for the first time because you really believe 
what they're doing because at the time they're so fixated on you and re-idealizing you. You're once again at stage one where they're love bombing you and you are the best thing that ever happened to them. They truly believe that um, you're soulmates and that they can't let you go. With a narcissist, when you take them back, when they come back and they hoover and you take them back for the 17th time, if you guys have noticed, the love bombing, the attention, all that glory is less and less and less. And you, you, you can see how every time you take them back, you just get breadcrumbs and breadcrumbs and breadcrumbs. Now, with a borderline personality disorder, it's not always that way. They truly believe that, oh, no, I fucked up. And then they go into chase mode. They go into chase mode where you are their priority now. So now they will make all sorts of promises. They will put you they will put you first, all right? Instead of putting themselves first and healing and getting their shit together, they will put you on a pedestal that was bigger than the pedestal they put you on when you first met them, okay? They re-idealize you and they love bomb you to the extreme on social media. Be careful when you see these things play out, exactly how I'm about to tell you, okay? The borderline will create a shrine in your name. It will open up a new social media account or their own, or they'll make a special one just for you and all the memories that you guys shared together before they lost you, before you came to your senses and you said no more before you put your foot down and you said, that's it, you're full of shit, I'm not doing this again, I'm not going through this cycle again, I'm not gonna do it. And you, you finally established your boundaries and your voice was heard and they paid attention. At that moment, you saw how powerless these disordered individuals actually are. You witnessed them collapse totally and beg you and grab onto your arms or to your legs and drag you and not let you leave. You're trying to leave your own house. You're trying to leave your automobile and they don't let you leave. They cling on to you like desperate children that are afraid of being abandoned again. And yet they fail to realize that this is happening again and again in their life because of their own creation, because of their massively destructive patterns of behavior. But the victim, especially the victim that's unaware and not educated, in, in borderline personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder. They will confuse those tears, those desperate acts as love. They will confuse that and say, damn, well, I've never seen this person beg this way. Like they're begging. And you know, we, we talk a lot about psychopaths and how they don't give a fuck because they have they have no empathy and they're totally incapable of showing any type of love, of showing any type of true connection. Everything is fake. They're faking it. They're trying to emulate it to fit in, to make you think that that's what they feel so that they can control you and extract what it is that they want and put on a fake persona and a fake facade for the world to see. But not a borderline. And you see the borderline begging for you not to leave. In hysteria, you're like, damn, well, this must be real. I mean, holy crap. I mean, look at them. They're losing their mind. And in a way, that looks kind of crazy and psychotic when they do that, doesn't it? But you, you see them that way, and it breaks your heart, doesn't it? It breaks your heart because at that moment, and I know I'm going to get some shit from some of you guys that are really angry, 
But at that moment, they mean it. I'm talking about the borderline here, not a psychopath. At that moment, they mean it. They're crushed. And they truly believe they can't live without you. And they will tell you that they're going to die if you leave them. Please don't leave them. Please don't abandon them. The same way their father did. Ah, don't do it. And you're like, oh, fuck. So you start to compromise, right? You start to bargain. See, before you had that conversation, you were done. But then they touched your heart. They touched your heart. And um, at that moment, it feels real. And it feels real to them too. The problem is that this story will repeat itself again. And like the boy who cried wolf by the, by the third time, you're going to look at that and, and you're going to be repulsed. Like, there you go again. You made all these promises. You wanted me back. I had moved on, I took you back, and you did the same exact bullshit. And now you're begging for me to stay, and now you're bargaining, and now you're making all these promises that we both know you can't keep. And yet some of you guys still take them back, only for, this, for history to repeat itself. And then you wonder why you can't get out of this situation. You have to do what's hard and what's difficult if you want to grow in life. If it was easy, we'd all be doing it and we'd be living in utopia. But you gotta do the work and it doesn't feel good to watch your crying, lying, borderline, ex-girlfriend, ex-boyfriend, pissing themselves crying, begging for you not to leave them even though they're the ones that screwed up the whole thing. So they re-idealize you. So at that moment, they promise to cut off anybody that they were triangulating with, anybody that they were cheating or living a double life with. At that moment, they realize you are the prize. You are the best source of supply. You, they realize they're not going to meet anybody like you. And they will shit on anybody else that they were grooming or entertaining. They will completely shit on them and put all the focus back on you and trying to get you back. They will create a shrine on the internet, on social media, because they have to get validation from somewhere. So they have to post for all the world to see what a special person you were and how they fucked up and how because of you they are who they are and how much they've learned and how much they've grown because of you how much you've done for them how they took you for granted and how they're gonna get their life together now they start hitting the gym right they start trying to look good they start to get they try to get their finances in order they start setting goals now because maybe that's what you wanted them to do so you got to be careful when you see that shit playing out because it feels good doesn't it it feels good for your your ex to beg and to desperately want you back right it feeds your ego, doesn't it? It feels good, like, look, look at them. I told them we're not gonna talk for 90 days. Prove it to me, get your shit together in 90 days and we'll see, maybe we'll have a conversation. And what's going on, they're blasting for the whole world to see how they're improving and how they're gonna get you back. And if, if they, they can't get you back, they're gonna dedicate their life to showing you and to proving you, you know, again, putting you first instead of putting themselves first. Are they doing it for them? Why did my voice squeak? Are they doing it for them or are they doing it for you? Because if they're doing it for you, it's not gonna last. Okay, everlasting change has to come from within and it has to be for you. Not to please someone else, not to get somebody back, but for you. 
and you do not have to broadcast it on social media for the whole world to see. When you're doing that, you're just desperately begging for likes and attention and validation. You see, the borderline, they're going to get their validation somewhere. If you're not going to give it to them, they're going to get it from all their followers or your followers when they start tagging them. Yeah. And then you're going to confuse that as a, grand, as a grand gesture of love, as a grand gesture, a token of affection. You're going to confuse that, and you're going to let your guard down. You have to realize that's not love, that's desperation, that's not self-love. They don't love themselves. They just don't want to feel like they were abandoned again, so they're going to cling on to you. But once they have you again, Ladies and gentlemen, it's in their nature to self-sabotage and let everything go again. How many times has this happened to you? See, if it's the first time, then you might say, hey, Kita, you know, I know what you're saying. It, it, sounds, it sounds legit, but this has only happened once. I've never seen this side of her, so I'm, I'm going to give it another shot. I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. Good. Try it. Let me know how it works out for you. Maybe they're not borderline after all. Maybe they're not narcissists after all. Good. Try it. But if this has been happening time and time again, and you've been having the same issues time and time again, and this is the pattern, and this is the cycle, and you still want to go and give them the benefit of the doubt, and you've made your choice, you can't complain when the whole relationship, when your whole world crumbles down upon you again and you find yourself back in step one, day zero, like I like to say, the trauma bond has reset and now you are the one that can't get your shit together. Because this disordered individual is going to go and get distracted with whatever shiny object they see, they'll be able to cut you off. At that very moment, when you thought they had finally come clean, they had finally gotten over their immaturity, and now, now things were going to be good, and you let your guard down, you compromised your integrity. You bargained because you were afraid of losing them too. You were afraid of being alone. And at that very moment that you became vulnerable, the borderline showed you who they really were. You have to you have to judge people based on their, their history and their patterns, like a criminal, a repeat offender. You can't, just, you can't just give them bail. You can't just let them out. You're a repeat offender, motherfucker. Look at your track history. Fuck you. You should have gotten your shit together. I got a couple of friends that are cops, and we exchange stories about you know deranged fucks out there. And it's like... You know, cops have seen it all. They deal with so many scumbags. And it's like everybody that they arrest, everybody that's in jail, oh, yeah, they're, they're innocent. Yeah, I was framed. They, they all have a very convincing story as to why they shouldn't be there. And it's like, look, the same shit is with these, these toxic, abusive, predatory, disordered individuals. They all talk a good talk. But you have to look at their track history. You have to see how no matter how nice their words sound, no matter how they package it, no matter how many hashtags on those Instagram and Facebook posts, no matter how many filters they add in all your pictures, they're going to do the same thing eventually and you're going to continue to suffer and the relationship is never going to move forward. As a matter of fact, some of you at that point 
will say, you know, maybe what we need to do is get married. Yeah, that's a great decision. Let's get married to someone that time and time again has been lying, cheating, causing you all sorts of pain, anguish, anxiety, panic attacks. You feel like a shell of who you really are when you're around them. You can see the collapse coming a mile away. You feel that impending doom a mile away. The same shit happens. And then you get that boost to your ego, that dopamine rush, when they start begging and crying and, and telling you how sorry they are and they're gonna, they're gonna fix it, they're gonna fix the relationship, they're gonna fix themselves. And then you give yourself that false hope again and it happens again. Yeah, maybe you guys should get married, right? And even funnier, even funnier is when they say, you know what? Let's have a baby. Yeah. Let's go have kids with the crazy. Sure. That's always smart. Let me know how that works out for you. Guys, you got to wake up. If this is a pattern that you've been witnessing time and time again, you're no longer a victim. You're a volunteer. All right? So I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it because I was there. I was there. I went through all those, those cycles, you know? And deep inside when I would have conversations with myself, not rumination, true conversations with myself, you know, the ones that have no words, that they're instant, like in your meditations, everything just, you know everything at that moment. And I realized I was just afraid of being alone. I was afraid of losing a person that understood me, afraid of losing an amazing sexual partner, afraid of, oh, what if I never meet someone again? All the dumb, intrusive, negative thoughts that pierce through your subconscious when you're not paying attention and you're letting anything get in. Yeah, I've been through that shit. And you know what? When you finally make commitment, when you finally make a commitment with yourself and you don't broadcast it online, sacred and secret, and you get to work, things change. Things get better. And you start attracting the things that are in correlation with who you are. Your personality, right? That's what starts to change. You know, I always say you, you, are, you attract what you are, right? So, no, I'm not saying we're all narcissistic, but maybe we had exactly the right ingredient or we were tapped into the frequency where these vampires dwelled and so we we found a connection there but that connection didn't raise the frequency did it once we made that connection they started downloading our energy into their server and we, we just kept we just kept going down, down and down and down. I was like, what the hell is going on here? And the moment you let them go and you put your foot down, man, things get better, don't they? You get a sense of clarity. And now you ride that clarity for a while. But be careful, it doesn't, the clarity doesn't turn into cockiness. But you have to realize how, damn, you know what? I drew that line in the sand. I cut this person off and I feel better. I don't got to deal with this drama anymore. I'm not trying to fix someone that can't be fixed. I'm not trying to take responsibility for someone's trauma and someone's disorder that I didn't create. How about I start working on myself? How about I put myself first and figure out why? I'm attracted to vampires like this and see how that goes. Go in a new direction, uncharted territory. Because if you keep repeating your same mistakes, if you keep just dwelling on a space, a toxic space that you know how to navigate, right? You feel safe, you can predict it, and you're going to be stuck there with all the bullshit and all the baggage and the consequences that come with that paradigm. And you're afraid to go 
into uncharted territories. You're afraid to move forward without that leech that has been dragging you down for years. Trying to make something work, trying to fit a square into a circle. It's not going to happen. So I wanted to leave you guys with that because I know that when the borderline starts to re-idealize you and they start to love bomb you on social media, it tends to get confusing and it gives you a jolt to your ego and you start entertaining it and before you know it you're having coffee together. Before you know it you're, you're running, you're going on, you're running or maybe now oh, let, let's meet up at the gym and I'll, I'll be over here and you'll be over there but I just want to you know, I want to show you that I'm accountable. Go fuck yourself. Get yourself a personal trainer. Don't invade my space. Don't join my same classes. Don't join the same things that I'm doing. I don't want to see you. But if you accept it, it's because subconsciously you know, you already know, you've already made the decision. You're going to take them back. You're going to sleep with them again. And the minute you sleep with them again, that's it. I can tell a lot of guys, you guys have caveman brain. The vagina is just too powerful. And you tell yourself whatever you tell yourself and then you get entangled again. They got their claws back on you. So many fish in the sea and you want to go back to that low hanging fruit. It's unreal. It's unreal. So I'm going to cut the video. Right here, I think I've said enough for today. So uh, drop a like and comment in the video if this is a situation that resonates with you. If you're going through something that sounds too similar to this and you'd like to work directly with me, I have a private one-on-one -on -one coaching program. I have a link below in the description so you can get more information. Uh, we'd love to work with everybody, but I've had to actually kick some people out of the program. I can't work with everybody. I'm not accepting everybody anymore. Um, there's some crazies out there, I got to tell you. Um, so I want to make sure we're a good fit so you can get the best bang for your buck. Um, so no, don't hesitate. Uh, shoot me an email and we'll see if we can make this work. In the meantime, I hope you got a lot of value from the video. And let me know what other topics you'd like me to cover. And when I have time, I will record those for you. Hope you're having an amazing start of the week. My name is Kira, and this is Psychopath Exposure. As usual, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care.